What's up design family and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. So glad to have you guys back on the channel. On today's episode, I'll be going through what I believe are my key tenets for success in both life and in business. And before we get started, if you're wondering who is this guy and why should I be listening? Why is he even qualified to be giving this information? Give me a moment to introduce who I am. My name is Shadi Adada. I live in Beirut, Lebanon, and ultimately I am a business owner. And what I've done over the last six years is scale a very wacky idea of creating digital fashion and redefining the way that fashion is designed, developed, and produced, and scaled it into a 20 plus person business, generating millions of dollars in revenue per year, working with brands from all over the world. So at the age of almost 30, I believe that I have a strong grasp, and of course I'm continuously developing what this means, but a strong grasp on what it takes to build a holistic mindset that is meant to allow you to have growth within and growth without. So if you're interested in following my journey and learning from these key tenants, well, tune into this episode. You guys are in for a good one. Welcome to Fit Design TV. Are you interested in sports fashion, design, and manufacturing? Are you establishing your own brand? You are looking good. Anthony, how are we doing? Do you want to? Thank you. Well, you've come to the right place. Lights, camera, action. My key tenets for success in life and business starts off with number one. You must do what needs to be done, especially when you don't feel like doing what needs to be done. And most people have this convoluted idea of setting up a business, that it's this exciting prospect. It's this thing that they're going to be tremendously passionate about and they're going to spend their days working towards these goals that are so lofty and they're going to change the world and they're going to be spending 99% of their time doing things that they're so extremely thrilled to be doing and honestly guys I'm going to tell you right now that could not be further from the truth and I don't say this as a way of whining or a way of putting you down what this is is a reality shock most days you're not going to want to be doing 90% of the things that you have to do. And when I say you don't want to be doing, these are not things that you're naturally inclined to want to do. As a business owner working as a fashion designer, I find that I love to be creative. I love to create content, specifically things like this, but unfortunately I do not get my, or I do not get most of the time during my day to be doing things like this. Most of my day is spent strategizing, managing team, making sure that my clients are happy, following up with emails, following up with calls, making sure that my business is running smoothly. And on the outside, I'm making sure that my life is running smoothly. I'm doing the things that I need to be doing. I'm eating healthy. I'm getting into the gym. I'm cultivating my personal relationships, all things that require tremendous amounts of effort. And it's not a switch. It's not something you can turn on and off. On the days that you don't feel like it, you say, ah, today, I'm just not going to do it. And honestly, most days, especially if you've been in the rung of things for a while, you're not going to have that natural inclination to want to do it. No one wants to wake up at five. No one wants to go to bed at 10 after having worked a 14, 15, 16 hour day and then have to go to bed early so that they can wake up early the next day to get things done the same way. But these are things that must be done. And what you'll find is when you actually train your body, your mind to do the things that you don't want to do, you build up a skill set, a skill set of determination, of willpower, of discipline. And it's those skill sets that are going to get you through days that you really don't want to be getting through and days where you might feel tremendously low. And those are the days that you need to push the hardest because mentally, when you overcome those situations and those scenarios, what you'll find is a fortitude builds in you, a willpower builds in you, and that's the willpower that's gonna take you that extra step and take you that extra mile. Number two, you must change your definition of happiness. Most people think that being happy is to be giddy, to be laughing all the time, to be joyous. And honestly, that could not be further from the truth. What it means to be happy is not what you'd like to believe it is. It's not what the media tells us it is. It's not what our parents or our friends or our family might tell us it is. Happiness is not laughter. Happiness is not being giddy. It's not being overjoyed. Happiness is a very stable state of affairs. I find that my happiness baseline is so low. What it takes for me to be happy is no longer what I was taught it must be. If I'm not completely distraught, I'm happy. Even on the days where I feel low, I'm still happy because happiness to me is no longer this state of immense choice, laughter, and all this giddiness. It's a very stable mindset. And changing your baseline for what happiness is, believe me, it goes a long way because 
when you fixate on this idea of happiness, the idea that they sell to us, it's number one, not attainable, right? You will never be able to achieve that level of happiness for an indefinite amount of time. So you always find yourself on the back foot. You always find yourself striving for something that is not sustainable. At the same time, that level of happiness is not a productive level of happiness. Imagine trying to get work done in that state of euphoria, right? That fleeting state that we all try to chase or we, we seemingly try to chase. It's not a productive state. Please guys, you must change what your baseline is because that happiness is not attainable. It's not something that we should even strive for. It's a lie. They say that that happiness that comes from pleasure it's ultimately a false god. It's something that we all chase, but we'll never get there. Change what it means to be happy. And I promise you, you will achieve fundamental happiness in your life. Number three, and guys, please take this with a grain of salt. And I understand that different people have different state of minds, but this is that your emotional state is irrelevant. Your emotion is something that you're sold on. It's and you're sold on it in a way that your emotion is a reflection of how you should feel and how you should carry out your day. So if you wake up sad, then you should be sad that day. And that could not be further from the truth. What you have to understand about emotions is that they're transitory. An emotion, if you try to suppress it, what you end up doing is you give it more power, you give it more strength. Also, if you feed into that emotion, if you give it the time of day, if you give it the attention that it's begging for, what you end up doing is you acknowledge that emotion. You tell yourself that I am a sad person or I am a depressed person or I am a down person. And I'm not trying to make light of the fact that some people do suffer from depression, but trying to draw the line between what it means to be depressed and what it means to be down on a specific day, those are two very, very different things. And when you feed into that sadness, you give it strength. So what I do is I notice that there are times where I feel down, but instead of trying to suppress it, instead of trying to assume a victim mentality where I say, today I'm sad, so I won't do anything and I won't go to work and I won't do the things that are required of me. What I tell myself is that this sadness is a transitory state and I'm going to allow it to run its course and I'm going to do what needs to be done. I'm going to actually, I'm getting it to work. I'm going to put my best foot forward regardless of how I feel, regardless of this emotional state, because this emotional state will have zero impact on the actions that I take today. And this is how I live my life. And it served me tremendously well. And I promise you, it's a muscle that you can build. Being able to transit through your emotions from a lower vibration to a higher vibration, this is something that comes with time. It comes with understanding who you are, but you have to start somewhere. If you're starting at the very bottom, what you need to do is be able to acknowledge that part of yourself. And if you're trying to build a business, your business is not going to care regardless if you feel down or up on a specific day. There are certain things that need to be get done. There are certain tasks that need to be completed. There are certain calls that need to be taken regardless of how you feel. So your emotional state has zero impact in terms of the world that you live in and the business that you're running. Number four, your business is not a personality trait. Your business should never become your personality. It should never become your identity. And believe me, I've suffered from this in the past. And this is something that I'm always trying to overcome. For the longest time, especially in my early 20s, what I noticed was that I began to associate with myself with the business that I was building. When I would be with my friends, it would always be a discussion of what we're doing in the business, what I'm doing right now, what the next step is. And it became a part of my identity. And to some degree, it became a part of my identity because I did not take the time to cultivate other parts of my identity. Your business and your mission, the things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, they form parts of your identity. But to develop a holistic image of self, to have true self-confidence, you must know that if everything was to be stripped from you, your business, your money, your assets, everything that you believe makes you a great person, that you would still have substance underneath that. And this takes time. You need to develop hobbies. You need to work on cultivating your relationships, your communication skills. You need to work on being more spiritual, being more religious, whatever it takes for you to actually achieve that larger sense of holistic imagery in yourself. Please understand that building a business is one of the most beautiful things you'd ever be able to do, but it should never become your whole personality. Because when you tie yourself to one thing, you allow yourself to fall as soon as that thing falls with you. I know that today I could lose this, but I would still have the foundation necessary to build something else because I'm not built because of the business. The, build, the business is built because of me. Understand this and internalize it. I promise you it'll take you a long way. Number five, you are your own baseline. Comparing yourself to others is a losing battle. I'm not saying that you should not strive and get inspired by the success of others, but in this modern day and age, in this social media day and age, what it's very easy to do is to look at your own journey and to begin to compare it immediately to those that are on a different journey. And you use 
that comparison. And what that does is it takes away from where you're at. It takes away from your momentum. And I'm not, and I'm not saying to not strive for better and bigger things and to use others as sources of inspiration. But what most people do is they give themselves the excuse that they shouldn't even try. And why bother? Because there are so many other people that are out there that are living a better life that they would never be able to compare to. And that gives them a sense of inferiority. It gives them a sense of why even try? Believe me, the only person you should ever be competing with is yourself. And this sounds so cliche, but it's the truth because you're your only baseline. You're the only person that you can accurately know inside out and understand and tell yourself at the end of the day, did I do everything that is within my power to actually achieve that 1% betterment in this day? You can't answer that question by comparing yourself to someone else. The only person you can compete with is yourself. So use yourself as a baseline and try to get incrementally better with every single chance. I promise you, this is where true growth is. This is where true development is. And this is where you'll find and achieve the momentum you need to keep growing and to keep pushing in your life. Number six, decision making is a muscle. Flex it frequently. When people hear from me that decision making is a muscle, they don't really understand what that is. Think of the last time that you were put in a scenario where you had to make a decision. Decision making requires a sense of self-confidence. It requires a cognitive ability that requires you to take in all of the necessary data and to make an accurate judgment over what needs to be done. But what most people do is they will be given a decision to make and they'll analyze it. But because of a lack of self-confidence, they won't make a decision on it and this propagates. When you choose not to trust yourself, when you choose to defer an action to later to someone else. What you're telling is I don't trust in my ability to actually take a decision that's going to yield the result and the outcome that I need. And this propagates. At the same time, when you go ahead and you trust yourself and you accurately look at the data provided, what you're doing is you're building up that workflow. You're building up that ability to immediately take a decision, to stick with that decision. Whether you've taken the right decision or the wrong decision is irrelevant. Because regardless if it's right or, or it's wrong, what you're doing is you're learning. You're building a sense of trust in yourself that at the end of the day, regardless of where the chips may fall, that you'll be able to actually take care of yourself. And this gives you such a tremendous amount of belief in yourself. And this continues to push your decision-making ability forward. What most people don't understand is they're confused as to where to get started. They're confused because they create this un attainable goal of what it means to be a decision maker. They believe that every single decision that they have to take needs to be spot on and pinpoint accurate. I've taken many decisions in my life. Not all of them have been successful, but that's fine. What I've done is I've learned from that, but I continue to trust myself and I continue to learn and I continue to have an open mind. But what I will not do is to defer a decision to later because it'll never happen. Number seven, the first step, whether it's in life or in business is always the hardest. Do your best to never overanalyze it. Take any step. Any step is better than no step and be willing to adjust your aim as you move along. Why I believe most people never get started. Most people never get started because they set these unrealistically high standards. They put this idea up on a pedestal and they tell themselves that in order for me to even be willing to take the first step in the right direction, it needs to be the perfect step. And the second step needs to be the perfect step. They put such a high standard, not because they have high standards for themselves, because this gives them a cop out. This gives them the ability to say, I won't take this step because I know that my step won't be perfect. So why take it all together? It gives them the ability to say, at least I tried, or at least I thought about it. And this could not be further from the truth. I always advocate to start anything starts with just starting. Nothing has to be perfect. Nothing has to be pristine. You'll never achieve this level of enlightenment that you need. You'll never have the right time. You'll never have the right finances. You'll never have the right people around. What you will have is yourself. What you will have is your ability to take the right step in the right direction and to adjust your aim as you move along. Never, ever, ever set these unrealistic goals because you'll never achieve them. And even at this stage in my career, I take steps regardless of whether I know they're going to pan out or not. I trust myself to take these decisions and I trust myself to be willing to face the outcomes as they arise. So take this step and be willing to adjust your aim as you move along. Number eight, your reputation will follow you. Cultivate it and protect it at all costs. Your reputation is the sum of all of the actions and the engagements that you take on a day-to-day -day basis over a long period of time. Who you are and how you're viewed by the world is, let's not kid about it, it's important. And I'm not saying to not be who you are and to always strive to be a likable person and to always not assert what you want out of life. No, because I think to be an inauthentic person is to tarnish your reputation. What you must do is to be an authentic person 
and to cultivate a reputation that is in line with the person that you want to be. Understand that people have memories and your interactions, your engagements, the way that you speak, the way that you interact with people, how much of a good person you are, these are things that will follow you from today to the day you die. And you're always building that person. Think of life as a series of credits. And every time you do something that is in line with, number one, the greater good of everyone, and two, who you are authentically, this is a point on the board towards the person you ultimately need to become. Allowing your ego and allowing emotions and allowing this negativity to overcome you and to distract you from ultimately the goal that you need to achieve and the direction that you need to take. This is something that I learned early on. You are a sum of every single interaction that you've had in your life. So always strive to bring the best possible version, the most authentic version, the most straightforward version of yourself to every single interaction that you have. Don't lie. Don't allow yourself to be swept up with your emotions. Don't allow others to manipulate you. Don't strive or don't stray from what you believe to be just and what you believe to be true. Consistently following these four traits will allow you to cultivate a reputation that you believe is in line with you. Whether it's something that is generally viewed as positive or negative is irrelevant. As long as it's something that you feel in your heart of hearts is an authentic reflection of who you are and who you want to be. So guys, please cultivate your reputation and protect it at all costs. And number nine, build systems, procedures, and fail safes that allow you and your business to bring out the very best in your team. It's extremely rare to see a solo entrepreneur go from zero to $10 million all by himself or herself. What it takes is you must build a team. You must build a powerhouse of people that are along the same path, the same journey, and share the same mindset and the vision as you. It's very rare that you're able to get to those places, to those upper echelons all alone. So what you need to do as a business owner is to build systems, procedures, and fail safes that allow you and your business to bring out the very best in the people that you work with. I fundamentally believe that everyone that I've ever worked with and true human nature is to do the very best that one can do. But in order for others to do that, you must give them the opportunity and the mindset and the foundation to do so. So as a business owner, you must look at your team and evaluate what are they missing? How can I streamline? How can I create a service that is uniform? How can I create fail safes that people can learn from and avoid making major, major mistakes? How can I create a service based agency that my team can plug into and bring the very best versions of themselves? And this can't be something that is esoteric. It must be something tangible. It must be a flow. It must be something where you move through point X to point Y to point C and you have to sit down and you have to understand that you need to test it. You need to test it on the field. You need to make sure that anything that needs to be adjusted is adjusted. And this is one of the true joys of building and scaling a business. It's figuring out what works and what doesn't work. But in order to figure out what works, what you need to do is consistently be taking at bats, be taking swings and finding out, sure, this swing missed, this swing didn't go too far, this swing was a home run. And consistently be willing to reevaluate because what got you to point A won't get you to point B and what got you to point B won't get you to point C. Number 10, last but definitely not least, is going to be take care of yourself mentally, physically, spiritually. It's so often that as entrepreneurs, we often put ourselves on the back burner and we tell ourselves that the business comes first, the team comes first, all of the other obligations that I have come first before I do. And this is actually extremely counterintuitive because if you look at life, if you look at your business, you are the vehicle that is driving your business forward. Without a strong motor, how can you have a strong car? How can you get to where you need to get to if the person driving the train or driving the boat or driving the ship is not operating at the full capacity? So I implore everyone to have a strong mind because a strong mind will allow you to have the necessary cognitive ability to make smart decisions, to move through life, to create services that other people need, to solve fundamentally difficult problems and to create value in the marketplace. A strong body because at the end of the day, you will have long, long days. A strong body will allow you to move through these days and give you the necessary energy to bring the very best version of yourself to any engagement and any interaction that you face. And lastly, a strong spirit because life is going to challenge you. People are going to challenge you. Situations are going to challenge you. 
But with a strong spirit, what you'll always be able to do is remain grounded. You'll be able to tackle any single challenge that life brings you with a sense of calm and a sense of clarity. And don't underestimate that. It's a weak person who allows himself or herself to be swayed by the throes of life. It's a strong person that allows himself to be grounded in the moment and to take every single challenge on the chin and learn from it and move through and to be educated and mature about every single move they make. Well guys, that is it. That is a wrap on this episode. Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. You've learned a thing or two from my key tenets in life for success in life and business. Whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're working a job or whether you're just someone who genuinely wants better from themselves. I know fundamentally that there will be something in this list that is for you. Let me know which of these key tenets you resonate with the most and ultimately where you find yourself in your current journey. Guys, I say this from the very bottom of my heart that I absolutely love making these episodes and it's a way for me to share a moment in time with you guys and for me to engage in terms of where you're at in your personal journeys. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Fit Design TV. Until next week's episode, stay awesome.